Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Ephesians chapter two. And you have and you have he quickened made alive, who were past tense dead in trespasses and sin. So before salvation, John three tells us we're not condemned. We're condemned already. Now the, word, the only thing, and not to, it's a long story, but the only way that a man can be saved uh, before he's saved is when he has no knowledge of sin and no sin's been imputed to him. But the, the standard of a man who after he knows what sin is and knows what he has done is wrong to God, you're already condemned. You're born of Satan through a seed of a woman. You are born by Adam, dead in trespass and sins. And that is where you, your need for the new birth, John chapter 3. It's past tense. In the eyes of God before salvation, you are dead. Walk of the living dead, I guess. Wherein in times past he walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. And that's not Jesus Christ. The spirit that worketh. That now worketh in the children of disobedience. So you're past all that. Your path of the prince of the power of the air. It, it's gone. You're, you're supposed to be under Jesus Christ. And this prince of the power of the air, you know, I'm trying to, there are churches that call themselves the prince of Christ, and they disobey God in the Bible. And we were already warned in the, in the, Corinth, in the Corinthian uh, epistle that Satan will deceive you. Satan will, will make himself look like a minister of righteousness where children of disobedience, John 8, 44. If you are living to what the Bible's telling you to do, you are alive and well with God. If you are disobeying God, you are not doing what the Bible's doing. You are in disobedience. You are walking to the prince of the power of the air and the world. There's no other. Among whom also we all had our conversation. And that's not talk. That's a manner of living. 1 Peter 3, 2. Moon also we have our conversation in times past. This is who we were in the lust of our flesh. That's the world. And of the mind. Imagination. Uh, in times past, the lust of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Being fleshy. Paul spoke about the, the Corinthian church. You're carnal. You're yet fleshy. Christians still can do that. But we ought not to be doing that. That is something we, we were done. We have done. We shouldn't be doing it. That is the mark of a worldly end. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That's your imagination. So you got to realize you've got to give an account for your thoughts. 
what you are going through your pea brain. And you don't have to act upon it. You just got to think upon it. And we're by nature. Now here's the nature of mankind. Here is the natural man. Children of wrath. The last verse of John chapter 3. John the Baptist tells us the wrath of God is abiding upon those who do not believe on Jesus Christ as their Savior. In the eyes of God, if you have not come to Jesus Christ as your Savior, God does not love you. God does not hate the sin and love the sinner. No, no, no. Look, look what it says that you were. You were a child of wrath. You did what the world wanted you to do. You, con you conceived in you your desires and your love of your flesh. You even thought it. And God said, you walked as the children of disobedience, and you are the children of wrath. How can someone be so stupid, so ignorant of the Bible to say God hates the sin and loves the sinner with a remark like that? You're lying. Yea, God's all long suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but you've got to come to the Son. If it's not the Son, it's rebellion, it's disobedience, it's wrath. When they say Jesus Christ is life, he is life. But God, the day you got saved, you say, but God. This is the day you got saved. The day that you ask Christ into your heart, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein he loved us, See, that moment that you got saved, you are the child of disobedience. You are the child of wrath. But God, on that day you were saved. This is what happened the day you got saved. But God. I love the but gods in the Bible. They're a wonderful study. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life wherein he loved us look at that corporate that's the body of Christ when you got saved you became corporate you became the bride of Jesus Christ even when we were dead in sin look at that when I before I was saved that moment I got saved I was dead in my sins the wages of sin is death but the gift of God's eternal life. But God, the day I got saved, I was in death. I was in rebellion. I was in darkness. But God came with his mercy. God came with his love. I was dying in my sins. As quicken us, has made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved. By grace, not what you can do, not what merit you can do. By grace of Jesus Christ, by the love of God. And has raised us up together. Raised us up. And made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's kind of funny, I'm not there now, am I? Yes, you are. Your flesh has not arrived, but Paul is telling, hey, are you saved? Have you come to the time in your life but God? You have? Then God has already raised you up. You are now not in you are now not going to heaven. You are now in heaven. Already you are seated with God and Jesus Christ was seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Your body just hasn't made it. What a wonderful thing has happened to me. The day I got saved, God said, pluck them out of hell and bring them before my throne. And what happens? What happens at that moment of salvation where I'm plucked out of hell and the, and the sinner's brought before the throne of God, a child of God? The Bible says the angels rejoice. So the angels know that, hey, there's someone here new before the throne of God. He just have not made it yet, but you're there. So you have come from past condemnation, John chapter 3. Now you are at the right hand of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Seated, sit. Isn't that funny? We are sit before the throne of God, yet the Bible says, Go ye in all the world. 
and preach the gospel. Grow as a Christian. Fight. Put your armor on. That in the ages to come, future, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through, through Christ Jesus. God is so wonderful. God is so great. And he blesses us. And that blessing he shows us is supposed to be for others to see. For other Christians. For the world to see. Hey, what's going on in that guy's life? Hey, look what the Lord has done for me. And you better give credit to Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. You can't do it. You can't walk up to God and say, God, look what I did. That don't work. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God in Scripture with Scripture, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ. Not of works, least any man should boast. Imagine if we went to heaven on our own merit. How long would be World War VI in heaven when... I gave more money to charities than you. Well, I started more hospitals than you. Well, I gave the more missionaries. I got more people saved on the missionary field than you got saved. Well, I prayed more often. And we'd be battling out by what we'd done. You know how God's eliminated war in New Jerusalem? We're going to brag about one man. And that one man is my son. And you can't fight about that. How's that? That's how you eliminate war. What's James say about the war? You fight because you have not, because you ask not. You fight because you got temptation. You war amongst you. But in glory, we're not going to battle it out with each other. You, <coughs> you get people say, well, I got this number mount saved this week. You're not going to have that in glory. You're going to be, that's the one that saved us. That's the one that provided all the mercy. That's the one that loved me. You see those nail prints? That's what it's all about. You see those feet prints? Those are the feet that saved my soul. It's all about Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. Not a works least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. It's in Genesis 2, God created us. Oh, wait a minute. Created in Christ Jesus. So you mean back then when, when God took that lump of dirt and spit upon it? I think that's my own personal thing. And he made man a living soul and breathed into him the breath of life and provided him the flesh. Look what the Bible says. Created in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ was just as much there as God is there for their one. You cannot believe and be saved or have anything to please God if you say that Jesus is not God because the Bible says that Jesus Christ right there was there when man was created I'm created by God who is God God is God the Almighty God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit I was creating Christ Jesus unto good works I was supposed to be reverencing and glorifying God and two, I was tempted with some temptation that drew me away from God called sin. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Before what? Before man even fell. It's a corporate. As a body of Christ, we're supposed to please God through Jesus Christ. You taking a good look at the churches today? They're not doing it. If the churches were doing what the Bible says you would do, you would, would not be able to go from block to block to city block to city block without hearing a man on the, on the street corner preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You would not be able to have a neighborhood, would not have somebody knocking on your door to hand you a gospel track and tell you how to be saved. You would not be able to go across a radio dial and not find the true gospel being preached over the airway. You would not be able to get away from... Uh, the hymnals being sung out of the churches and out of the church bells praising Jesus Christ if the church was doing right. But the church has failed. Wherefore, remember. And that's an awful, uh, often, not awful, an often thing we are to, you're supposed to remember because we forget. Now, when was the last time you actually sat down and, and went back to your Bethel where you met Jesus Christ at Calvary? 
When was the last time you, you just expounded to yourself that meeting at the cross? That ye being in times past Gentile. Okay. Oh, we're not talking to the Jews. We're talking to those dead dogs. Wherefore, remember that ye in being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Now, we're told as Christians, don't look back. Don't look back. In the, Paul says, remember when you were a dead Gentile? Remember that moment that you were in the flesh? Remember you were when you were a child of disobedience? Paul seems to be bringing it back. Do you remember that day you came to Jesus Christ? You ought to do that often. That's what the Lord's Supper is. Remind you of Christ living and dying for my sins. And he's coming. In the flesh. In the flesh. In the flesh, you're a Gentile. In the life of Jesus Christ, you're a Christian. Who are called uncircumcised. Or un uncircumcision. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called a circumcision in the flesh made by hand. So the Jews said, hey, you guys are uncircumcised, you Gentiles. That's Peter, that's Jonah. That at, the, at that time, Ye were without Christ, dead, trespasses of sins, walking in the world, entertaining the flesh, children of wrath, children of disobedience. That's who you Gentiles were, Ephesians. That's who I was once, being aliens from the commonwealth, commonwealth of Israel. Now remember the Old Testament. Now we're going somewhere with it. That Old Testament was about Israel, the temple. Everything had to do with God was through the nation of Israel, through one tribe, one city, one priest, one God. And guess what? You Gentiles were not part of that. You could have. The Queen of Sheba came. We read of Gentiles in the Bible in the Old Testament. They came to God and they pleased God. The Ethiopian eunuch, a Gentile, came into the temple. And I would I would assume by God reaching out to him, trying the best he could to reach God. But you're still you're not an Israelite. You're not a Jew. Now, where are we going with it? Well, if you remember when we studied the book of Galatians, someone came into that church. Someone said, hey, you got to be circumcised. Hey, you got to do this. Hey, it's the law. And Paul is warning the Ephesians. Hey, there's one church that got in trouble. They had they have left their ways. They have reversed the repentance from God. I want you guys to realize you're not under the law. If that person comes to your church, don't believe him. You know you're doing right. It's Jesus Christ. But yet, don't forget who you were. Dead. Gent Gentile. Dog. Having no hope. Well, in the Commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Well, that's kind of wonderful because the Bible tells us there were many covenants in the Bible. There were covenants even to non-Jews. But that one particular nation, Israel, covenants of promise having no hope without God in the world. And that's the present condition of man today without Jesus Christ. There is no hope. And they're without God in the world. For God so loved the world. The blessed hope, Titus 2.13, is the coming of Jesus Christ. That's not the blessed hope. That's not the hope for a worldly lost man. And yet they speak about hope. They don't know what hope is. Because if they did know what hope was, they'd be saved. They would have God. They would have the blessings. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And Paul tells Timothy, there's one mediator between God and man. There he is, Christ Jesus. There's one thing that brings me that was far off from God in the pigsty. There's one thing that brought me to the Father. That's Jesus Christ. 
for he is our peace. Oh. So you can't have true peace without Jesus Christ as peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What's that middle wall of partition? That was the veil that was ripped. That gives me access, not as a high priest, but as a child of God to walk where? Right in the temple, right into the what? Where no man, where no, no, no Jew could go into. That mercy seat. And what's that mercy seat? Where did he say it here? Verse 6. Has raised us up together and made us together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know where I am? I am somewhere where no, let me sit. Here's a qualification for the Jews. Verse 12. You know where I am? I have gone, I don't know if I can say this, with I have gone where no Jew has ever gone before. I have gone right into that mercy seat. You say, well, wait a minute. What about Jews that get saved today? There's neither Jew or Gentile. If a Jewish person is saved today, he's a Christian. He is now gone more further than any of his forefathers. Only one tribe can go in there. Jesus Christ ripped that veil into two. And I say, Jesus, save my soul. Wash me. However you, whatever you said, whatever prayer it was to ask Jesus Christ, into your life to save your soul to wash away your sin that moment in there you went from you went from the altar that was burning day and night into the water that cleanses stepped into you got the bread you got the candle you got the incense altar of prayer and then you step right into it there are the cherubim there you are seated with christ and god in glory you just wait for your body to go Yeah, you may have, there may be people who are the commonwealth of Israel, but they're not going to get what you got through Jesus Christ. Who having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Look what he's done, Isaiah 53. It's a fool for a Jew to say that Isaiah 53 is a nation of Israel. The nation of Israel has not abolished in his flesh the enmity. That lies between me and God. When Jesus Christ put his flesh on that cross, God said, okay, through that sacrifice, man can come to me. I will remove my wrath. I will remove that hatred off that man through my son. Even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances. We know the commandments. For, it, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace that he might reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross so the cross but he may reconcile both unto god in one body by the cross the cross did not reconcile me to god jesus christ did and then the Bible tells us by commands we're not to have no images or idols or pictures or anything like that. And yet, what do we do? We lift up the, the cross. No. It's the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. That, by having Jesus Christ's death on the cross, that made God, I'll talk to him. I'll reach down to him. But it has to be through the reconciliation. It has to be through Jesus Christ, our my mediator. My mediator between me and God. That's the only way God will see you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Here it is, the reconciliation. But by me. Not of works. So what Paul's doing, not the Ephesians have, have strayed away, the, Ephesus, uh, no, um, uh, the Galatian church has strayed away. He's warning the Ephesians, hey, this, is, this heresy is going around. It's already got one of the churches. Laying out for us today that we don't get perverted, that we put all the faith and all the finished work on the Christ that died on that cross. Not the cross, but the Son of God who died on the cross.
God never wanted us to to hug the old rugged cross or grip to the old rugged cross. He wants us to cling and be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. It reconcile, and that might reconcile both under God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Somebody came to you and preached, You're too loud. You're too uh, not, no loving. You didn't have enough sympathy. You used the word. It didn't sound good. And God, you know what God said about the preacher that came with the gospel to the Ephesians? He said, You preached peace. Now, that's kind of funny because the world's got it backwards. And came and preached peace. So every worldly preacher that is adapted to Satan, peace out of the pulpit, let peace reign, let the dove fly, I'm going to come and bless your country with peace, 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 and they do it without the cross, there is no peace. Without Jesus Christ. And Jesus even told us in the Gospel of John, the world has have a have a peace, but that peace is temporary, not long lasting. So when you preach to somebody, no matter how they take it, how they afflict it, you go to them with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the peace. For through Him. We both have access by one spirit unto God the Father. John uh, 620. Okay. Well, the scripture is Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That access is through him and only him, Jesus Christ. You gotta be careful because Paul warns another church, there's another Jesus. Isn't there another spirit? So Paul has affirmed what Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Paul has just affirmed what Jesus said. And also warning you, <coughs> at the same time, what are the three things? There's another Jesus, there's another spirit, and another gospel. What is the subject of chapter 2 of Ephesians? The gospel, Jesus, and the spirit. And make sure you got the right one. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints. And of the household of God, that is what happened the day you got saved. I am no more a stranger to God. I am no more a foreigner of God. God cannot build a wall that will keep me out. I am his family. I am his child, the Bible says. I am his son. And I am seated in heavenly places. All by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And are built upon the foundations of the apostles. So like I said, every born-again born Christian can run his spiritual soul-saving blood of Christ, can run his spiritual genealogy back to one of the 12 apostles, which runs back to Jesus Christ, the foundation that Paul speaks about. And prophets. The prophets spoke about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So your salvation better have the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the stone set by God for salvation. In whom all the building fitly framed together. So as a saved Christian, as the body of Christ, 
You are fitted together as the bride that God has adorned for his son. Groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Oh, look at that. That temple that's now gone, this is 64 AD, according to the, the Bible date. There is still a temple in Jerusalem. It's not destroyed to 70 AD. There's still a temple there. And Paul is writing to a bunch of Gentiles in an Asian area of the country of the world. And he says, you are the holy temple. With the temple that's now, or I'm talking about as he's writing, that is now in Jerusalem. You know what Paul said? Just forget about that place. Forget about that one place that's written in the law that I will meet you there. See, salvation of works, the Old Testament said, there is one particular place, Jerusalem, the temple that you need to go where I will meet with you. I will meet with you off that mercy seat, the law says. Now that I'm off the law, I am saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. I am that temple, and guess what? I don't have to go to Jerusalem to, be, to meet with God. The Bible just said in, in, in chapter 2, verse 6, has set us together in the heavenly places. I am in the mercy seat wherever I go. Wherever Paul is jailed, and he's jailed his entire life, as miserable as the jails were those times for Paul to be, he is seated at the Father. And if he had a need, he'd just say, Father, I have something. Father, I've sinned in this jail. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. He does not have to go to Jerusalem. He can't go to Jerusalem. He's in bonds and he can't go get a lamb because he's in bonds and has no money. But he has the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I have the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I don't have to go to Jerusalem. But I can be seated in the Holy of Holies of the mercy seat right there. And I don't have to go to Jerusalem for that. As a matter of fact, God looks down at me. He looks at the body of Jesus Christ. He says, that bride, he says, you're the temple. You know, I perform the duties of a priest. I'm called the priest in Revelation 1. I pray for other people. I bring them before God. In whom ye also are builded together for an inhabitation of God. Through the Spirit. So throughout chapter 2, there's the Trinity. There is God the Father. There is Jesus Christ. And there's the Holy Spirit. And you are part of that family. You are not going to heaven. You are already there. Your body just hasn't made it yet. And all your merit should be the merit of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And when we get to Jesus Christ, he'll be the one that will be always praised about. Hey, you can't help to get excited. The glory of God in the highest.